Hey everybody. Got a couple of things to work on. Alrighty, so I'm gonna ink. I think start off by inking this little bit here. Gonna be covering the bubble. <laughs> hey Tobias, how's it going? What are you working on? Use a thicker brush. This is kind of a big drawing. That's better. better. That's pretty good. It's always tricky to balance. Uh, Drawing characters uh, like bigger in the frame, closer up. So if you keep the same line weight, they can look kind of weird. As if you drew them smaller when they're further away. Even though this is not that big of a change, but. Good man and just the sponge guy. Nice. Hey, I just saw your comment right before I went on, but I didn't uh, didn't respond because I was gonna. I take a long time to type, so I didn't want to start typing. But uh, about the Colin and Hobbs set, I actually just found out that there was a, a a new set. Is it like the 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 book one? That's like a it comes like the long shaped books. Uh, it was like two of them in a box, I think. Um, I just found out about those, so I'll look into them. Uh, for something like that, I would probably definitely go for a paperback, because he had asked if I would get the paperback or the hardcover. And uh, that would be, if I wanted to get like all, the whole set, that'd be a lot of books, and hardcovers get really pricey. And I tend to like uh, paperback in general just because it's easier to read easier to hold and bend and pick up it feels less precious i guess so it's like nicer to not that i'm going to be tossing it around or anything but if i wanted to i'd feel less bad about it and it'd probably do less damage to anything around me I'm 100%. The one I know of is three hardcovers or four softs, and it's a lovely orange back. Oh, yeah, that was the older one. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that one uh, looked really nice. I did see someone had, like, there was some printing issues. Like, some of the hardcovers, like, the the glue was coming off of the spine a bit. So, it, it, I think that was the set I was I saw that in. Sorry if I'm disparaging it, if it's not the case. But, um, but, yeah, I never picked up that one. Because I have a few of, like, the really old books. Like, it's like, they're like a big square paperback like where they sold in, like you know the 90s you can get them at like all the bookstores i have a couple of those and a couple of the small little rectangular ones um, that were printed a long time ago um like one's called like the authoritative 
Calvin and Hobbes or something like that. And the indispensable Calvin and Hobbes, kind of like funny little, little titles. Uh, but, um, those are the only ones that I have, but it would be nice to get like a, a standard set you know, of all of them together. See, the only reason soft and spooked me a little because when the spine breaks happened on my big bone Bible. Yeah, I, big bone Bible. Um, yeah, I wanted to get that. Um, it would look really nice having like a big thick book, a big like actually the, the size of it actually deterred me. But having the idea of having all of the, the black and white bone um, seemed like a really good thing to have, but I never picked it up just because it's so big and thick and I knew I wouldn't enjoy actually reading it because um, that just seems like humongous and awkward to read. Um, so I started looking online at uh, um, comics dealers and I started buying the black and white issues, which are surprisingly, you can get them for pretty cheap, you know, depending. Nothing more than a couple bucks. I haven't spent over like three or four bucks, I think. Uh, most of them are from like the mid part of the run. So I'm sure early issues would be more expensive. But hey, Francis, how's it going? Thanks for stopping by. Just talking about Calvin and Hobbes and Bone. And I also have some of the scholastic. Um, little books of bone that are colored which the, the colorings you know not my favorite um you know there's like lots of kind of gradients and stuff using it i really think it would have been better just completely flat color um but it still looks pretty pretty okay better than you know it could have been it could have been worse <laughs> Going well, that's good. Mm. Maybe I'll break this line. By says, yeah, the colored versions aren't my favorite. Yeah. Like, uh, like Jim S Smith said, he said he always, you know, he sees the book as black and white. He planned it for black and white. So that's the way it was intended, but totally understandable for getting a, you know, wider audience. And that's probably about as wide as you would ever get it, you know, scholastic and like, it's like an every every school and library and it's everywhere it's pretty huge so definitely good for him speaking of weird choices and jeff smith in his latest outing tukey is black and white and randomly has like gray gradients for the night skies it's so off-putting interesting i had seen i wanted to get that um i remember seeing it for his i think you know kickstarter or indiegogo or wherever it was I never ended up picking it up. I don't remember what it looked like. I I just remember seeing black and white art. So maybe none of the samples had that gray gradient. Um, but uh, yeah, that's interesting. Was it like that straight, like flat kind of like computer gradient, with not like a painterly where you kind of like you know add a little brush texture to it, just like that straight you know white to gray. Like you'd see in like, you know, the nineties comics when it, when computer coloring came in. Yeah, I'm certainly for the flat color. That's just what I enjoy seeing. Just, it's probably like a, you know, man stuck in past kind of thing, but I think it works. 
better, at least for the kind of comics that I like. But, um... And also, like, when you do lots of rendering and gradients, it's more difficult to do, like, the stylized color, like, when you have, like, you know, a panel where everything's yellow or, like, where it's, like, a, a chromatic thing where, like, you know, different shades of the same color, like, you know, for um, expression and emotion. Um, you can get away with that with flat colors because like, it's like a graphic aspect, but when you have like rendering and seeing like all of a sudden someone's red and like they have like these, you know, shaded around their fingers and their face and their cheekbones are lighter and it's like, it looks really odd it, or it can look odd. I'm not saying that that's always the case, but um, it can look odd. And then the more detail you get in that area, it can kind of make the comic page harder to read depending on how it's handled. You know, obviously you can do it well. But it, more often than not, it, for my taste, it's just a lot easier to see and to like consume a page when it's a flat, flat coloring. But. Francis says, also the effects look odd when you do the printing and some of the rendering too. Yeah, you can definitely run into that problem because, because you know, there's so much, uh, there can be variation in the printing if you're not very, if you're not super specific with knowing how it's going to be reproduced, you know, like that's why I have those, those old color guides, you know, um, which is actually what I use a lot um, down here. This is like a DC color guide of all the available colors even though slightly off because obviously they were um anticipating for like you know the color newsprint would would add to it so they wouldn't be as bright but actually like kind of like the, the bright colors but um but yeah definitely there's 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 a certain you know areas on the color wheel on that color graph in uh you know in this thing here not all that's printable not all that's going to reproduce exactly that same way when you're having mixing colors and gradients and all that stuff you hit those areas that aren't going to print very well yeah francis says learn that the hard way uh what was that on uh, was that something you had test printed or, or something or a project you worked on um so flicking through it it is kind of 90s photoshop gradient but volume two seems to have none so maybe jeff hated it post printing yeah that could be that must be frustrating. It's, it's always frustrating when you want to feel, especially if it's like a project where like, I'm guessing it's like, is it two, just two books? Even if it's, you know, more than that, you know, I would imagine having a consistent feel tone would be pretty important. That's unfortunate that, uh, that it wasn't, but you know, sometimes you just got to try things. You don't know if it's going to, it's going to work out or not. Exactly, unless you have direct control of the printing. Yeah. Yeah, I did a fruit, uh, print test and a full hardcover oh, on the children's book you're working on. Okay. When I saw it, I was like, yikes. Yeah. Yep. I think, it, but hey, it's great that you got the tests done so you can, uh, yeah, had to go back and fix a ton of stuff. Yep, definitely. Um, at least you were able to test it out and, uh, you know, fix it accordingly. I actually did like a kind of a little... Let's see, comics. I took a, uh, where is it at? Here. So even though I'm talking about, you know, shading and, and rendering in, in comics and letting flat color, I was just kind of playing around and seeing if I wanted to, uh, yeah, just seeing what color would look like, you know, doing a, a rendered, you know, style, just messing around. The colors are, the actual color choices don't really mean anything. I was just like messing around, but I just wanted to see what it looked like adding like, you know, some, uh, watercolor ish and then like coloring the lines, you know, like, uh, you know, not, not having it just like a black line. Um, so that was just like a fun little 
a little test. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Um, I think the flat color still appeals to me more, but it was fun to try out and see, you know, what it would look like, a possible way it could look like if I ever did color. That middle panel gives me Bill Ray color vibes. Oh yeah, yeah, I love I love his stuff. I have a whole folder full of uh, his uh, backgrounds and I think just like color uh, palettes. Yeah, although adding all the extra rendering means adding more time to the schedule. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that, that would take uh, lots more time. That would be like easier if you had like a book deal, you know, and you had time to uh, set aside for more production. But um, just for getting getting stuff out there. Sometimes you don't have that luxury. Let's see, maybe add some hairs there. No. No, actually, I don't like that. You like that. All right, so. Is living in a small town helping you work on these comics because the cost of living is cheaper, I imagine? Um, yes, in a way, I guess. Um, we actually moved to a small time, town because we were able to purchase a house because it was the only place we could afford. So yes, yeah, so not having rent certainly helped lower, you know, for a, for a payment on, on the house definitely helped. Um, but when I, I see no wrong brush, what am I doing? Frames. I'm actually right now just raising my daughter during the day. So my wife is the only one that works. So that gives me time to work on comics at night. So Roundabout answer, yes, having less, <laughs> being in a small town and having less to pay for a house uh, definitely, definitely works. Um, oh, I'm going to do it in this brush. Uh, should probably use a ruler. But yeah, when I got uh, laid off at Pennsylvania, um, we decided it was better to just less stressful since we were able to do it um, was to just have me watch our daughter while my wife works. And like it worked out also just because you know, working at Pennsylvania and being a, you know, freelance artist, uh, you pay a lot more in taxes. So it like took a huge chunk out. So like not, you know, working a job, you know, less taxes we have to pay. <laughs> it's crazy how much that takes out for just because you, uh, you know, work on your own. All righty. That looks pretty good, I think. Okay, there we go. I think that works. Okay. 
I'm actually hoping to get even more work done because my daughter is going to be starting school this next year. So that'll free up some time during the day. Because right now I just do everything at night when everyone goes to bed. <laughs> so hopefully I'll be able to work during the day and then possibly during the night too, depending. You know, sometimes you can only work so much in the day on, on creative stuff. But uh, so we'll see how that goes. Um... Uh, Tobias, did you like the uh, the Jim Smith book? Aside from the the gradients. <laughs> Francis says, that's great. Yeah, it is. It's, you know, still hard budget-wise, but, <laughs> you know, sometimes the the added stress didn't seem like it was worth it. Sometimes, especially like with, you know, with all the stuff I was trying to do at Pencilmation, I was working really hard to do all those, all those episodes, trying to get them you know, as close as how I wanted them as I could. Okay. So that's done. And then I have, oh yeah, this one. Mm -hmm. In case anyone's curious, sometimes when I do these like block letters, uh, an easy way to get uh, an even thickness is to just use like a brush that's, you know, there's no line weight variation. Like, if you want that kind of lettering, obviously there's, you know, you can do it like where it's like, you know, wacky if you want or, or however, you know. But uh, sometimes I like having just like these like even thick looking blocks and then I just you know go over them and then you know change Oops. yeah and it gives the effect of having a good clean uniform letter if that's the style that you want So this is a pretty big panel too, so I'll keep this brush pretty thick. And then we thicken the smaller brush. I alternate between two size brushes of the same brush. I have a little button on my keyboard thingy that lets me switch between those two so I can easily get a get a thicker one and then get a thinner one. Let me draw some hairs.
Mm, it looks kind of odd. It doesn't really look very good. Let's see. May have drawn. Oh, with this, that's why. This is his elbow. Okay, that's why. This is supposed to go. And there. Maybe this would make more sense. No. I really like doing these big sweeping blobby motions for fingers and shapes. A lot of fun. I also have a button on my keyboard that flips the canvas because there's, you know, your hand gets used to drawing a certain direction and it can be easier <clears throat> to just obey where the hand wants to go and flip the canvas. Just so you can see it is kind of cheating. Yeah, if you want to look at drawing as a physical act that way because you wouldn't be able to do that if you were drawing on paper. I mean you could flip it over but you wouldn't be able to draw on that side. You could plan it out I guess that way. But uh, one of those things I'll happily do because it speeds up the process and you know I work all digital so might as well uh, Take advantage of the tools. All right, so I think I have a, <clears throat> a ruler already. Where's that ruler? Let's see. Oh. All right, here it is. Okay, cool. So this is another open panel, so I think I just want... A line here, I think. Let's see. Let's go to the. Uh... Yeah. Maybe I'll make it kind of even more wobbly. 
This is kind of like the energy is coming from this panel. Hmm. Yeah, try it out. So now I got my other ruler here. So I'm not exactly sure. I think I'll break the lines. Because you could either go like, you know, you draw the line all the way through and then erase it. I think. I just do it like that. And I can kind of just. so it's not so perfect I guess did I do these wrong lines wrong yes I did so this is just a a radial line ruler, every all that. Well, actually, there's a one point perspective uh, ruler, but the radial line is basically the same thing because all the lines, you know, converge to one point. But it says, is your process to fully ink the book and then do the color pass, or do you finish each page fully before moving on to the next? Um, I actually don't color this comic. I, though that, that page that I showed was just for kind of for fun. Um, I actually specifically chose not to do any color on this one because I was going to be not only printing it, like printing individual issues in the more, uh, you know, color adds a, makes it more expensive. But also for t to save time, I wanted to be able to just focus on drawing, drawing the book, and uh, and releasing it. And also, I really like working in black and white. I like having that uh, challenge to make a scene readable with just you know black and white. And then I also do some the the half tones. Um, but no, so but back to the question of the process. Um, no, I actually kind of just jump around to any stage. Like you'll see that have panels that having in pencil that I'm just doing inks. Mostly that's partly because I'm doing these streams and I wanted to have something to like to work on. That's a little easier to do for right now since I'm still new to streaming and drawing at the same time. Um, but even when I before I was doing this, I would uh, have pages that are just only thumbnails. Pages that are, have pencils, pages that have fully inks, and any mix in between. Um, I am definitely guilty of doing the funnest slash easiest stuff first, and then dreading like the last half of the book that I've left all the hard scenes to draw um, or boring things. Um, it really is like you think like you get like you feel like you've got eighty ninety percent of the book done. And then you really only have like 50 because the last like 10% actually ends up being like 50%. It just feels like that as much as it actually is. <laughs> um, so, uh, but I have everything 
generally planned out so I don't I don't get I don't screw myself like I don't start like drawing and finishing a page before I have the whole like the whole entire issue is all thumbnailed and um and and loosely scripted not all the dialogue is 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 would be final because I can change that at any point really especially when it's just you know um just me doing it let's see what this looks Looks pretty good. I think I want to add some more little trailing dots, though. And then... Pretty good. Uh, I know that pain. I do it with my boards. Yep. I don't know if anybody here, but my cat came in as a meowing, so I have to pet him. Hmm. Um, yeah, I no, totally did the same thing with, with my boards and anything, you know, in work. <laughs> And let's see, color in. Oops. Black. Oh. And then sometimes just for fun, I'll like, you know, since you can easily undo, try it the opposite way. I got that. In my head, I see it as the black letters, but I'll change it this way and see. That almost looks, maybe that does look better. And then it's easy to just like, well, maybe I'll try 30 half tone to see if maybe that was too much. Can you put it back to 15? Hmm. Not sure. I'll leave that off. I almost feel like It feels stronger, it feels more in your face. Maybe, let's see, if I did it that way. Mm, no, no, no. I think I'll just leave it at that. I think that's probably pretty good. And I can always change it, like once I, it's kind of dumb to like get this into the, the nitty gritty of it, because the balance of the of the page can change what I need in this. Like I might have a lot of black, you know, somewhere else and I'll need to change this so it's not too heavy in one area. For now, I'll leave it like that. I got these. Hmm. Might switch to penciling something. I have this scene here. Yeah, maybe I'll try to change it up a bit. 
and down these. I have these little guides on here. I'll put them on for each panel. I just split up the, uh, so it's easy to see like where the middle of the panel is, you know, either way, and then broken into thirds. Same thing with the vertically thirds. Um, just a good way to like, you know, if you want to have something like, oh, keep it on this third of the panel so that, you know, it balances out. And like, also like these are kind of focal points, like, so if you want to have something, you can put it up here and then have something in the third, and then that makes a pleasing image, I guess. <laughs> um, I don't always use it, but it's good to have it there. And it's also good just to have a straight line every like to be able to see a straight line. So if you're drawing something freehand, it's good to know proportionally. You know, if you want to have an arm sticking straight out, like it'll help. You know having these lines i also have a button that turns on the grid so i can constantly be able to uh, see that anyways so i have felt in here confidently scoffing and he's going to be holding a tupperware container full of gross food As you can see, my thumbs are generally really rough. Like this is like barely anything. It's just to get the idea <laughs> of what's supposed to be going on. Um, but drawing that quickly and that loosely, sometimes it's too loose, but sometimes it, like it helps you just get a simple graphic, undeveloped, uh, just straight from the gut kind of drawing, and that can help you know with the overall uh, energy. And to not get too uh, complicated or especially for my style which is very you know uh, cartoony and straightforward having good strong clean lines of action is helpful so I'm actually gonna want to move him over a little bit I think it'd be better, yeah, if he's more facing forward. Because the bowl is probably going to be down here. So I'm looking for, um, like, my brain's already looking for angles because, like, his head's tilted, you know, from the bottom up to the top like that. And I'm th already picturing the bowl he's holding. So that's going to be right there, you know. And then his hand's going to be right here. Like, he's going like, oh, you, like, you know, like that. Like I kind of like, you know, look for stuff like that and like, you know, this little, have a little thing that's like showing the motion. Actually, he's going to need to be holding a spoon, so let me put that in there too. I see none of that was in the original little thumbnail. It's just basically like a straight up, straight up and down drawing really quickly done. But uh, when you draw over it and you refine... make for a better drawing so he's really supposed to look kind of kind of pompous and and full of himself and whenever I draw miles I tend to like look for odd shapes if it's a funny expression. That's kind of a standard one, but I like to just try out different shapes. Maybe. Like... Even if they don't like makes sense necessarily if it looks funny or it gives off some kind of vibe it's a very uh a mix of kind of chuck jones kind of style of uh 
you know, doing expressions, having those really intricate and uh, interesting twists of lines that create expressions. And then obviously, like, you know, who artists that were influenced by that, Ren Stimpy and all that kind of stuff. It's pretty good, I guess. Hmm, actually, maybe I did it more like, and maybe something just a little more. I guess it's a little more standard, but I think it may work better. A little snaggle tooth there. Maybe his nose needs to be moved over just a tad. There seems to be a table here, so let's just do a quick uh, line. That works. Oh no, it's a curved. Dang it. I didn't know I had the curve tool. No. And I always like having my layers all like in Clip Studio. You can take a uh, any kind of pencil layer or any any layer at all, um, and give it all the color. So anything you do will be in that color, um, and then you can easily turn it off and switch it back. I don't want to get too there. So uh, I always do that. It helps me differentiate the different layers so I don't end up drawing on a layer I didn't want to draw on. I tend to draw on a lot of layers just so I can easily and quickly uh, manipulate and change things or remove things without having a big mess of erasing. So actually, I think I might draw the bowl in a different layer. It's good to have if you have a lot of layers to be able to quickly see which one you're on. This bowl is one of those old Tupperware from the 70s. That layer color feature is great. In shitty Photoshop, you have to make a layer, fill it, and then do a clipping mask. Yeah. Yeah, it's really great. Uh, it took, I, I didn't know about it in the beginning. Like, you, you know, you learn more features uh, as you go. But yeah, once I discovered that, I was like, oh man, that's so great. And, and definitely being able to not only ch quickly change the color, you know, back and forth, but you can, you know, click this and you can select any, any color easily. Um, it's really nice. Let's make bowl bigger. Cause I think it's pretty big. Let's see. So that's the bowl there. I think I actually make the size might be a little, the purport, yeah, yeah, the proportion's kind of off. Make it a little longer.
Yeah, yeah I haven't drawn in Photoshop in a long time. Um, once I got Manga Studio, which now it's called Clip Studio, uh, that's all I use. And then I started using uh, Procreate when I got an iPad like a long time ago. Um, and that's a pretty fun program. It's very awkward to use though because not only are you doing it like on an iPad, it's like even if you have like a little keyboard shortcut thing, there's so many things that are baked into it because everything's like touch and it's all based around not having a keyboard or any kind of extra apparatus. So everything's like hidden under menu, under menu with tapping and, and doing finger motions and everything. It's very awkward to use. Um, but a lot of people, you know, I guess if you just, obviously you can get used to anything, um, but I haven't, uh, I haven't used it enough to actually get used to it. It's very, very awkward to use, but the pencil in it, the, the drawing pencil and, and a lot of the brushes too, uh, the painting brushes, uh, but specifically the pencil I really liked. It really felt like a real pencil. So you have a friend that has illustrated four comics in Procreate so far. I don't know how he does it. I find it awkward. Yeah, I mean, there's people that just do, do all their work on Procreate. Like, that's that's how they do. And it makes sense. Like, if, you know, the iPad is like, you know, you can get it for, uh, it's not cheap, but I mean, you know, it, it works for what it does. And it's a pretty simple object to obtain, you know, you can afford it. And then the Procreate comes free. And obviously you have to get the pencil, but... But yeah, I find it very cumbersome because I'm just used to like, especially when you're doing something that like requires lots of like brain power and like, you know, it's awkward enough trying to draw anyways, <laughs> you know, like if something's already difficult drawing, I don't want it to be difficult to wrangle the thing I'm using to get that difficult drawing out. Um, but, you know, like I said, with anything, if you have to, if you get used to it, you can get used to it. But, you know, it's a very frustrating process in between. He was looking for a way to work out of his office because he didn't like being inside all day. Oh, okay, so we're actually working outside. Oh, yeah. I don't relate to that at all. I like being in a closed environment with nothing around me. Um, I mean, it's even harder sometimes to work if, like, you know, my wife's walking around, you know, and it, kids walking around. Like, it's just, like, it's just way easy to be in an enclosed, singular... Like, I was never someone who could, like, go out to a coffee shop and, you know, do some sketches. I had to do that in, like, life drawing. You'd have to go to your, go to anywhere and, and you know, draw poses from people walking around and stuff. And I could never do anything good because it just felt too, like, self-conscious and too, like, awkward. Like, thinking about someone seeing me drawing and, like, well, who does he think he is drawing over there? You know? <laughs> Tobias says, I was hoping Procreate Dreams would be an alternative to Toon Boom for animating, but it lacks the lasso tool, so I skipped on it. Yeah, and that's like the biggest thing like I've seen with people comment on um, on Procreate, and then especially with Procreate Dreams, like they, I haven't used it, but they said it was like uh, someone who's never animated before developed a program for animation. Like it felt so unintuitive. Um... You know, like, like things like, like, like a lasso tool. Like, how can you not have a lasso tool? Uh, yeah, that's just like a bizarre, bizarre omission. Um, but like, even like with Clip Studio, they have an, they have an animation. Uh, you can't do anima animation in, in Clip Studio. And I tried it. Actually, the first pencilmation storyboarding thing I did I was like, oh, I'm so used to Clip Studio because I was doing uh, comics. I was like, I'll do it with Clip Studio because I can draw with the pencil, with the, uh, you know, the textured pencil, and it'll be like, look like it looks like it's real life drawing. But like the way it was, like it was something like you couldn't easily copy and paste something on a drawing. Like say I wanted to like cut something out and put it in the same layer, you couldn't do that. It would make this whole other chain of drawings, and. Uh, it was just like this really bizarre way of doing it and it created a big headache for me and I wish I had never done it and I never used it again after that. Um, Francis says, huh, really? There was a lot of hype on it about, hype on Twitter about it. Yeah, no, a lot of people seem like it was very excited but I'm not saying, you know, it's a bad program or anything, the Procreate Dreams, but they're, 
like with Procreate, how it can be cumbersome and awkward to someone who doesn't know the ins and outs of the program. Um, I'm, that's probably where a lot of the, the comments that I saw on it. Um, it was like, it seemed like it was a big hype thing. And then after that, after people had started using it, it was like, oh, well, there's, you know, some definite issues that, that should be addressed if it's to be a, uh, a proper program, I guess, you know, in, in some people's eyes. But yeah, definitely if there's no lasso tool, that's a pretty big uh, uh, omission. Let's see. Maybe it'd be good if his arms are around it. That'd look kind of funny. Like he's like, he's cradling it right down here. Oh, I should have saved. <laughs> Tobias says a lot of the hype I saw was from paid influencers. Yeah, that's could be. I'm still, I'm still shocked. Tomb Boom Story Pro, Storyboard Pro isn't on the iPad. Oh yeah, I didn't know that. Um, I guess if it was, it would probably be a paid service, which is irritating. Clip Studio, you can't just buy it for the iPad. You have to pay like ten dollars a month to use it, which is ridiculous. It's a great program, and like, but like. Ooh. It's a crappy practice, you know, like with Adobe and all their uh, products going to uh, services. Don't want that peak corner of the bowl peeking out down there, so I need to oops. Move it more like that. Okay, that's better. Let's just give him a little Charlie Brown arm. It's just like floating <laughs> when they wrap their arm around something. Might look kind of funny, but no, that looks too weird. Yeah, I might need to have it like that. I might need to move the bowl a little bit forward. That's okay. <laughs> Francis says, never trusting Twitter again. You gotta watch those Paid influencer reviews on YouTube to get the full story. Actually, his head's too. Body's too big, so. Need to make that all that smaller, actually. make his head bigger anyways as well it's getting kind of close to the bubble there but it should be good actually they're gonna make the whole thing smaller because we need more room for his hand and spoon I kind of wanted to keep this all in the same static shot. Yeah, that's right. Because that's the kind of joke is to keep entering and exiting. So I want to make sure I have enough room for a trip, which I probably won't. So I'll need to resize it even more. Then I also might just end up having the camera pulled out more. It trips big, long head. Be too big for the frame. Let's close.
What, what drawing program, program do you do you use, Francis? Actually, maybe he'll just have his hand like kind of like uh, gesturing, like that'll be better looking if he has to hold a spoon. Okay. Francis uses Photoshop. How come none of you use Clip Studio? It's cheap. Doesn't Photoshop have a? I guess if you already have it, but doesn't the new Photoshop have a um, subscription model as well? I have Photoshop on my computer too, but it's like Photoshop Seven. <laughs> it's like super. Oh, maybe it's like the CS, like the first Photoshop CS. What is the one that I have? I use it every now and then for specific things. Which one do I have? Yeah, just Photoshop CS, I guess. I don't know. Huh. That's where I learned digital painting, so that's what I'm used to. Yeah, definitely uh, relate to that. It's funny, before I even uh, knew about Manga Studio at the time, I first, uh, I drew a comic in Flash, because that's what I was used to. I was, you know, doing storyboards and animation in Flash, and I was like, I can draw pretty well in Flash, so I'll just draw my comic in Flash. This was like a long time ago. Um... old wooden spoon crashes on me and all but I already have the whole suite and I'm also used to After Effects Premiere Edition Animate Media Encoder yeah 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 totally so it's a good bar bargain in my opinion yeah no that makes sense especially because you're you're doing like you know you're still using that stuff for animation and and uh file you know in the media production and stuff like that so definitely makes sense to have all that and to continue using it okay this spoon does not look like a regular spoon should be more of a gonna draw that dip and then i always forget sometimes it's hard to remember to draw things bigger than they should be with a regular person because these are supposed to be two cats and they're smaller you know than humans unless this would be a small like little baby spoon or something but definitely helps with the uh effect of them being in a world that they're not typically a part of helps with that illusion Maybe I'll have that break the panel there. Actually, no, I won't because this is kind of a rhythm thing, this gag. So I want the, all the, nothing to be broken out of the squares. So maybe. Mm. Not sure about this. I also do Tomb Boom. Every year around December, they do a sale. Instead of the usual 50 a month, it costs 28 for the whole suite. Oh, okay, if you agree to pay. Yeah, so it's like a big lump lump sum for the whole year at a, at a reduced price. So I always wait for that sale, and I have all programs for 28 a month. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's a pretty good deal. Okay, so you have your portfolio website with them. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, my portfolio website is on Squarespace. Uh, didn't really get me a job making it, so 
<laughs> but the, I have like a little the canned comics store page is on that, so it's not okay. That's okay. Um, not a waste. His hand is probably too big. Kind of drew his fingers a little too rounded. He's supposed to kind of have thinner fingers. So I might want to fix that. Actually, it looks okay, just small. That helps with this spoon. Let's make that a little clearer. Otherwise, it would have been cl cluttered up, you know, right there. So this gives us, makes a nicer silhouette. That's pretty good. No, that's the thing. It charges you 28 every month, so you don't pay the full year. That's why. They... Oh, I see. Oh, okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I didn't get any jobs either, despite having one. <laughs> I realized after the first month that it matters more who you know in the inside. Yeah, that certainly helps. And I mean, imagine it's even, even harder now with, uh, I don't know how immediately it's affecting things, but I see lots of stuff with, you know, AI, that whole, that whole thing. So I would imagine there's a big, like, uh, question in some companies' minds about who they want to hire and if they want to hire anyone at all, see what they can get away with, maybe. Just checking out your site. Any dates on the Two Goons physical comic? Yes, actually, I am going to... I know it's been up there for a while, same with the, the Mr. Simple thing. Um, but uh, I actually have... Let's see here. So you have a, a preview, like a print, what are they called? Uh, a dummy copy, you know? Um, so I have it all planned out. It's the, uh, it's the two main stories, the Karma and Tale of Two Heads, uh, the two longer stories. And then in between is a bunch of like selected uh, comics from the Everything Stupid we can see that um so i think i'm gonna be putting that out uh i guess beginning of next month i think that would be a good a good time so that'll be out soon i know it's been on there for for a while but uh right now i think total it's like 72 pages so Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's, it's uh, sorry. I don't know if there's a delay in the chat, but it's supposed to be, uh, I think it's around 72, 72 pages. Hmm. Okay. I think that's pretty good. And let's see. Add in the tail here. Oops. Uh, let's see. Oh, you did that. Might have to organize buying directly from you as Amazon doesn't let me buy your books. It always says unavailable. Ugh. Yeah. They, uh, for some reason, like some shop areas, I guess Australia is one of them. Um, they don't uh, print in that area because they have like certain like 
printing factories, I guess, in different areas around the world. And then if, you, if it's you're close to that area, they can print it and send it to you. But I don't really know which one. Like they have this list, and it's not really clear where it is uh, or who will be able to get it. So that's uh, good to know. I am going to um, start putting like on the canned comics. I was like, so right now they all link to Amazon because that's where the, like, the easiest for most people to get it. But I'm going to do a separate one. Uh, next to each one and have the physical book where you can just send it uh, buy it from me um, and maybe I'll do like a Add extra things like you know uh, an ancient drawing or something like that to, to make it more uh, enticing to someone um, But uh, yeah, I'll be doing that soon um, Francis says yep, honestly the whole process has been very disheartening applying getting rejected applying again rethinking my life choices applying again looking at call center jobs, checking the bank account. Yeah, man, I'm sorry. That's, yeah, I can imagine such a, it's a stressful time. Yeah. Sorry, man. It really sucks that, you know, that had to happen. Man. Uh... Tobias says, oh, nice. I look forward to grabbing a big bundle of your stuff. Yeah, yeah, that would be, that'd be cool. Um, I've been wary about doing the the selling my things, my, my own self, you know, and, and packing and shipping just because of the, you know, the print, the um, shipping costs um, of, of I have to, like, you know, find out how much it costs to ship to each area. And it just seems like a big headache. But uh, I'm definitely going to going to start doing it. So I'll just have to to jump into it and learn it as I go. Alrighty. So this should be a fun drawing to do. This is his. He's eating the food and realizing it's absolutely disgusting. So, this should be a pretty, pretty exaggerated drawing. Not sure how I want to do it. Maybe it'd be funny if he's like, his whole head shape changes. That could be funny. I like thinking sometimes just in like pure flat graphic terms. This might look too odd though. We could do a pumpkin head. Maybe like put his ears like Francis says, anyways, going to bed. Talk to you guys later. Have a good one. All right. Good night, Francis. Sorry for that <laughs> last bummer. But uh thanks for coming. I'm very, very happy you came. Give us some stuff to talk about. Hope to see you again. Let's see. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is going to look good. Want the spoon in his mouth. Maybe it goes towards the camera. Well, actually, it might be a bit funny if his cheeks aren't big and it's just like a little. Maybe even nothing there. It's just this the spoon to the mouth. But then it looks weirder that his head got big. Hmm. Let's And also helps to obviously flip the Q 
canvas to make it the drawing more balanced. This is a pretty graphic shape though, so I might just need to uh, double it and flip it so it's like exactly the same. Maybe not. Okay, Chat's meowing again. I have to pet him. I think this looks okay. I feel like his arm should be a little more angular. Not sure if it's giving the effect that I want, but I do kind of like it that it looks weird. Do you think his head's probably it's tilted? his hand kind of clasping his hand there as I could this covers up part of the face well, that kind of works your writing process before you get into thumbs are you getting feedback from people to see if the writing is working before drawing uh no <laughs> um i did when i was when, when it was uh Gloyd and i working together because we were working together on the writing of uh, like the the plotting um and then he would do the script the full writing of the script but um our process of coming up with the the basic the basis of the issue was a lot like when we worked at Pennsylvania, which was coming up with a paragraph of an idea and then we would talk about it and he wrote a, a 
a, a couple page outline of everything that happened and then we talk about it and, and take things out or add things and work on it from there and then he came back with a script but uh no on these i've just been doing it myself and uh haven't uh I haven't really showed them to, to anyone until they're released. <laughs> um, but I do go over it a lot, um, back and forth, and I him and haw, and you know, let my brain work out things. Hopefully, I catch everything, and also like you know, it's. Not a lot of it is is heavy, uh, heavy plot. You know, it's just kind of fun, cartoony stuff. But um, yeah, it's okay. Probably should. I should have some more eyes on it at any given point in time. Maybe I should. The idea was that he takes a spoonful and puts it in his mouth, but I think it might help if he already has some on his spoon. It'd be kind of weird that he'd be holding it like that if he did already have some, but. Maybe we need to. What layer is this? I guess it kind of works out. Maybe I'll change that later, but for now, it does look weird. Kind of funny. His hair could be like this. Maybe his jacket could be. Well, you gotta do it on that side, so maybe I won't do that. I want to make, have it be more balanced. Hmm. Okay. Now, this is an easy one, because this is the bowl. Let's see here. Let's see if it's that way. So I want to make it this way, at this angle. More of a change. Too big. Yeah, it's way too big.
Yeah, nice. Interesting to hear others' approaches as I'm in the early stages of embarking on a large project and I'm in the stages of getting a few peers to brutally tear it apart. Oh, very, very good. Good on you. That's that's only going to make the project stronger. Uh, can you say much about it or is it like a... Is it an animation? Or is it a project that just, just you you're working on? Um, but yeah, definitely good if you have some, I'd say like if you had some trusted people to, to look at, but it really doesn't matter. Getting any kind of feedback is always good, as long as you're able to, uh, you know, select what would actually be useful, I guess. But, uh. Oops. Do a little twist. But yeah, I, I, I definitely should, uh, get more feedback. I think maybe I'll do that on the next one. Or I'll, uh, yeah. I'll just say maybe I'll just do a bunch of pencils for this one. And the, the problem was like sending it some to somebody because my, my kind of process is, I guess, sloppy with putting everything together, you know? I would be afraid of like having just like some rough thumbs thumbnails, you know, and someone not getting what I'm presenting, maybe. It's an animated project that was originally developed at a big corp, but the funding was cut, so now it's back in my hands. So I'm ready to get cracking. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, not awesome that the funding got cut, but it's cool that, it's, that you have control of the project, and, and now you can uh, get to work on it. That's cool. Yeah, animation is definitely definitely a hard thing to get with get done with, you know, one person or even a small team. You know, with comics it's more or less basically do everything in one person, you know. But uh animation a lot of work. I felt really, uh, felt really lucky for the f a little more than a handful of episodes that I made at Pencilmation that were that I storyboarded and wrote and you know produced. Uh, felt really lucky to be able to have the resources to work with like really good animators and. Uh, basically like having my own you know vision of, of an episode completed it was very satisfying and really proud of quite a few of them If you ever wanted to send anything to me, if you're interested in that, I could I could look at it if you wanted, um, or even if you wanted to, uh, if you needed any help on it or anything, uh, I would definitely be more than happy to uh, lend any kind of assistance. I would be, I would, you know, I could do. Yeah, man, some of the talent that was involved in, pen in Pencilmation was insane. I know. I, that's, like, there was so much There was so much stuff that we did there that was, like, really good classic 
cartoon 2D animation that uh, I don't think got the uh, attention it deserved. Like, you know, people that went off to do great things, like uh, Freddie Elsom, he's, you know, working at a studio, doing great work. I think he was pretty high up on something. I don't remember what it was. But, um, yeah. So many talented people did a great job on a lot of stuff. Yeah, man, it'd be good to get your thoughts. I really do dig your stuff. And we are both wiggling in the same cartoony space. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, anytime, anytime. Send me a, send me a message or something. I'd be more than happy to take a look at help out or anything like that. Definitely glad to be, to see people, you know, doing, working on cartoony stuff. Because it seems to be, at least outside of animation, you know, with cotton, like, like in the comics space, there isn't as much, at least that I've come across. Uh, but even with it, with animation, yeah. Definitely would love to see it. Alrighty, so let's see. I want that table to be the same height. Might want to move this bubble to the other side. Where is that? There it is. Might even want to put it up in the corner. So I have more room. Hell yeah, man, there's almost no cartoony comics. It's rough, especially when that's all I care about. Yeah, <laughs> only to find a few gems every now and again. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't know why I don't see more of it. I mean, I guess it's like... I don't know, seen as like... Kitty stuff, I guess. I don't know, but there's so many... So, so many... Uh, Older people like animation, like, and you see on Twitter, like, people that grew up with, you know, watching Cartoon Network, and they're all old now, like me, and they all love cartoons, so it's just odd that it doesn't translate as much to comics anymore. It's mostly, you know, cartoony in a way where it's, like, slice of life stuff, and, like, where it's, the, the graphically, it can look like more of a cartoon, you know, um, but not, I guess, slapstick kind of stuff that I, that I love, like, um, there's really not a lot of just pure humor wacky absurd slapstick kind of stuff um i don't know why it is so be a controversial opinion but cartoony is really is a really hard sensibility and i think a lot of people can't do it oh like difficult to to produce like draw Wait, but cartoony is really hard sensibility and i think a lot of people just can't do it or maybe or just as a reader um 
Yeah, I'm not sure. I had a thought, but I just lost it. Oh, what I was going to say, say is, I guess possibly, possibly also like, like with humor, uh, it's, it's either you find, find something funny or you don't. don't. So maybe that's why there isn't a whole lot of just straight humor comics in the slapstick variety. Because like if there's like if you have something that's more, I guess, deep or more where you can get more out of it intellectually, I guess, um, you know. Maybe that's a reason why? I'm not sure. To draw. Sorry, that was written confusingly. <laughs> that's okay. To draw. Yeah, it's it's certainly... Uh, certainly difficult, especially when it's like... Like this style of cartooning is all based on clarity. I, that's like, like probably like my biggest... Uh, biggest philosophy and i think that also carries over from animation you know that's the biggest thing is as having clear uh poses and intent with what you're drawing um and getting things to read and then again that layers in with comedy where you know clarity is the most important thing in comedy in my opinion because if you don't if something's not reading then you lose the chance to be funny someone doesn't uh you know so much of it is dependent on uh, proper staging and clarity of poses and, and expressions. That isn't to say that lots of like quote unquote like sloppy stuff can't be funny. Like I don't know, the, the internet is proof of that. I think anything can be funny, but for the for the style of uh, you know this style of cartooning, yeah, definitely. Definitely has its challenges. But like, I really enjoyed doing the, the Mr. Simple comic just because it was such an opposite of my usual exaggerated uh, type of comedy. It was still exaggerated, obviously, because it was ridiculous and most of them were really stupid. But picking the actual poses and staging and everything, everything was very flat and very um because it was emulating you know uh ernie bishmiller's nancy comic which is you know that was the whole the whole idea of it and uh it was very satisfying to to draw on it and, and stage things in a different way where it's, i'm still trying to do comedy but it's in a more flat uh maybe it was yours over there oh a flat, uh, I don't know what the word for it is, but, um, a different sensibility. I guess, like, if you think about an animation in terms, it'd be like, for his feeling style of, of humor and staging compared to, like, you know, Chuck Jones or Bob Clampett. Both very funny, but both, uh, very different ways of communicating their style of humor. And I also think that's why, uh, you know, Frizz's shorts were so loved more by general audiences more like a working man's humor you know straight and direct not a lot to get in the way with the you know wild poses or expressions or you know things that you know someone's mom wouldn't understand you know <laughs> something like that Your yeah, Mr. Simple Vision Test Trip is golden. <laughs> Thanks, yeah, I like that one where he... What was it? He clips... I don't remember what the... Yeah, but it was something with the, the seeing eye chart. He, like, does something with the speech bubble or something. I can't really remember. But, uh, but yeah, I, 
it was really fun trying to come up with as many ways to to do the gag on the what's supposed to be printed in the universe is actually a piece of paper that he can move around uh, and using like sound effects as physical objects, which is obviously nothing new that's been around. But um, yeah, it was definitely fun doing that. Okay, let's see here. Yeah, I'm going to have to pull the camera out because there's just not enough room, I don't think. So let's use that same bucket. How do you feel about the uh, Frizz Freeling and Robert McKimson directed shorts? I would imagine you'd be more of a fan of the Clampets and Jones. Actually, you know what? Maybe. So he was sitting on the left side, my left. So it'd be funnier to have him scoop in because this looks kind of confusing because it looks like he came in from where he just ran from, which isn't the case. So I think I actually might want to redo that whole drawing. I'll save it just in case. I actually really love Freeling stuff. Feels he gets a hard rap in the modern post RNS world as the production was famously anti frizz. Yeah, I think I, I totally agree. Uh, I think his shorts were really funny with the lack of. Uh, physical, physical exaggeration, exaggeration. Those, those like choppy movements, movements and, the, and, the and the direct like, like not even because not it's not even like a zippy style of chuck jones zip it's, it's like a, just a, a direct like way of movement that's really funny especially to just like a general audience audience it's, it's almost like you know a physical version of kind of internet funny internet drawings you know it's like really kind of ignorant way of moving like Ignorance is a weird way to, to do it, but like, uh, and the same thing with like Michael Oz animation in Tex Avery's stuff. Like he's like, that stuff is so funny because it's directly made to be funny. It has, it has, it, there's no pretense of like beautiful animation or, or anything like that. It's directly just to be funny. And, um, like a lot of that stuff, especially now, like you see people talk about like, you know, uh, let's see. <laughs> if any, if any Looney Tunes uh, can be deleted, in my opinion, it's Ben Hardaway and Cal Dolphin. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I don't know if they need to be deleted, but but yeah, low on the list. I love Mike Law. Yeah, his stuff is so good. It's so funny, and just like perfect. You know what I was gonna say is um. Sometimes you get into the, we see arguments, or not arguments, but people bringing up like, you know, this animation is 60 frames per second, or wow, look how smooth this is, as if that's any kind of barometer for, for, for good animation. I guess something can be smooth and, and, and can look pleasing if your only uh, measurement is how smooth something is. And then, they, you know, that same person could see something by Mike Law and like, oh, that's, you know. Did they do that in like five minutes? Why does it look so choppy? Or why is it, you know, 
Um, but uh, and that's just like a, I think that's a can be a, a battle with not a battle, but like a point of contention with any kind of discussion of entertainment or art. You know, not everybody is researching and, and studying this kind of stuff. They just see it as it is. So you can't really hate on it because that's what it's meant to be. It's not, you know, that's the one thing that's like hard to like think about, you know, you don't have to think about this way, but you know, you're not making art for artists necessarily. You know, I should be making, I guess, I'm betting on your goal, but in uh, the Looney Tunes animation and theatrical animation, it was, you know, art for general audiences, not for other artists. One of my favorite artists, animators, is Dave Feist. Feast. I don't know how to say his last name. Yes, all this stuff was snappy as hell. I personally find a lot of floaty animation boring as hell to watch. Yeah, um, the, uh, the Disney short stuff from the 40s is technically nice to look at. Like, it's like all the production value and, and, and everything, but it's not funny. The goofy stuff was funny because it was supposed to be funny. But the other shorts, none of it was funny. Everything was, there was no, there wasn't enough comedic timing to it. It was just so, I don't know, not funny. Enjoyable to watch. I still enjoy them. I have the only DVDs I have of the Disney or the Donald Duck ones. Fortunately, I can never find the goofy ones. They were always too expensive by the time I started getting those. But I still like the Donald Duck ones. There's some funny stuff. But like the best animators, like, you know, Fred Moore weren't utilized past a certain stage. Of course, he, you know, died, but early. But even before then, you know, they were going away from attempting funny animation to doing more, uh, sincere animation, I guess. I think I want to have him kind of like, he's just like popping in. I think that would be funnier. And he'll like scoop it up. Like I'll take that. Oh yeah. I find it hard to watch TV 3D cartoons because they cannot hold the pose. It's always floating around. Yeah, I mean, I think that's definitely like a... I could see because they have this model, there's no need to redraw things. And then like an executive saying like, hey, why aren't these characters moving around? I'm paying for moving characters. These characters shouldn't be still. <laughs> um, but it's probably also because like I'm not sure which. I'm just thinking about kids, like like little kids shows, because my daughter has seen a couple of them. But like the Mickey Mouse's Fun House or something like that. I don't know if they'd look good if they were held held the pose too long because they're just like rendered simple 3D models, you know. But uh, but yeah, definitely moving stuff around too much can be a problem. A Disney guy who animated quite funny is Jack Sibley, known as a goofy guy. Yeah, that makes sense. I've heard that name. I'm not sure. I can't attribute specific scenes. But uh, definitely, uh, my big hole in like animation would be the Disney um, shorts from that time period. Um, even though I like them, but Bill, yeah, of course, Bill Teltia, yeah, favorite Disney guy, and his stuff is very much full of power and wild as hell. Yeah, for sure, definitely. Yeah, I don't mean to like you know dump on Disney. I like a lot of their animation, but when you compare with the goal of being funny in those shorts, they fail. In my opinion and especially like it's like a, a pet peeve of mine but the sound effects i really don't like the sound effects they used in those shorts like it's, it's all musical instruments basically and uh it just when compared to the what the warners were doing it's like no contest and then even you get like tom and jerry like that was like like a, a split between the two you know it, it still has a lot of full overdone animation that that disney had but it was more directed to be funny and had a lot of more of the the, the timing the looney tunes had i 
But I still like the, you know, I enjoy seeing the features, the Disney features. But, uh, I'm not, like, in love with, <laughs> in love with them. Oh, absolutely. I think even moving into modern Disney, they've never been able to do funny well outside of Goldberg and Tony Bancroft. It's always missed the mark comedically. I don't know that name, Tony Bancroft. That sounds kind of familiar. What did he, what did he work on? Um, but yeah, totally Goldberg and, um, I mean, I think, uh, I mean, even that era, the whole, like, you know, um, and I'm blanking on all their names. Andreas. And uh, I have his book, actually. The Nine Old Men book. Um, but yeah, all those early 90s lead animators. Will Finn. His oh, we're Pumbaa. Okay, okay. Yeah, his best work was Pumbaa. Yeah, definitely. Then in that, that era was certainly geared to entertain in a comedic style except for like it's like beauty and the beast and the beast scenes were kind of serious i guess but i mean i mainly think of aladdin like that was like obviously a <laughs> super cartoon and comedic but i think they all did a good job with that and then the even though it's less I don't know. The little stitch is really good. I like that one. Now I can just keep the same. That one, yeah. How do you feel about uh, Pixar animated movies? I really like, uh, I think Toy Story, the first one, is still the best one. Um, mainly because of the limitations of the animation. Uh, they had to like, they weren't able to rely on the typical stock animations that had Come so prevalent in uh, in feature animation, and it's just like I think it's a really good, uh, really good story and movie. It's like one of the few animated movies that actually is satisfying to me, for my taste, as an actual movie. I actually really enjoy watching it, and not just as an animation fan who likes you know looking at animation and and, and studying it and. Uh, like that.
And then of course the Incredibles, the first one is great too. That's a that's a movie that stands on its own as a movie. Actually, I don't know if I want him looking like that. Rolling his eyes. He'll zip in. I think it maybe want to make his face even more exaggerated. That might be too stupid. I don't know, I'm just trying to think of something different than the typical, like, I feel like what I've drawn, you know, here, the typical, like, about to throw up face. I don't even know if I'll end up redoing these drawings later, but I'm just trying to do, like, a something that's not typical. Actually, maybe something... This one, just like that.
I was actually just watching uh, the three caballeros today with my daughter. She was really enjoying it. Uh, and I really wish Disney had made more features in that kind of style. Like I think Dumbo was another one of my favorite. favorite Disney movies. I just really like that. You know. Early 40s. Cartoony. Round heads and pear body. Style of animation. And there's some really funny stuff with... Uh, and the three caballeros were uh, cab cabali the three caballeros uh with uh, donald like, the part that always makes me laugh is uh when they're saying like when all three of them are like uh like we're all birds of a feather i think and they're stars and they and they lean back and possibly you know and then the, the parrot and the the uh the red bird stay up but then Donald, Donald falls, falls backwards because he can't do it. I don't know. It's really simple, funny. I haven't really seen that. I have to check it out. Yeah. It's that early 40s, like Fred Moore style. I'm really excited to start watching, watching movies with my daughter. She's still a bit young, but we will be engulfing her in the first six Pixar films. Nice. Um, yeah, it's been really fun seeing uh, what she reacts to and what, what she enjoys and what she doesn't. Um, she's almost five now, but uh, she went through phases of wanting to watch the same movies, you know, over and over. Um, she's, she's pretty much loved all, you know, all the Disney, Disney stuff. She'll like, she got, got in a kick where she just wanted to watch Toy Story all the time, all, all three movies, and then the fourth one, um, and, uh, the, the, for some reason, like, the 2D ones that I want to watch don't, wouldn't hold their interest for as long. She wouldn't want to watch those as much except for there was a time where she wanted to watch uh my neighbor totoro that was like, like a year and a half ago i think or a year ago and we just that she just wanted to watch that for like a week straight that was all she wanted to watch which i was fine with that i really like that movie um let's see, let me have some more spinny stuff Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I like a lot of the um, the Ghibli movies. I really like... Um, probably my favorite one is Castle in the Sky. I really like that one. Oh, I need to add the spoon to this one. So, let's see. Maybe...
Is there any modern cartoons that really tickle our fancy? Um, modern, like, uh, cartoons, I think. Because I haven't really watched any, like, like TV cartoons. No. The last thing I saw that was, like, recent was, like, Gumball. And there was some funny stuff in that. But nothing that's really grabbed my attention animation or design-wise. Um, movies. Recent animation. Not particularly, not that I can think of offhand. I always blank out when I have to think of lists of things, but you think. I don't know. No, not particularly. I don't think so. Oh, well, I, I like Luca. That was, that was pretty fun. And Onward. I like those ones. Um, but yeah, television, I haven't really seen... I mean, I don't have cable, so whatever I could see would be on... I don't have any much streaming services anymore. But, um, I don't know. After, like, growing up with, like, you know, Ernest Impey and Rocco's Modern Life and Cow and Chicken and all that stuff, I haven't really seen anything in that vein. And that's the kind of stuff that I really like. Oh, whoops. Oh, I love SpongeBob. I'm always watching SpongeBob. <laughs> no, I'm not. I don't have cable, so I don't see a lot of stuff. But it's, I did like Spongebob when I saw it. I just never, I just missed that, like, that era of of animation, I guess, on television. Because by that time I was, like, focused, like, on, like, trying to learn, uh, you know, the 40s style cartoon animation. And the closest to that that was on TV was Ren Stimpy. Let's see. What about you? Is there, is there any, anything good that I should be checking out that you really like? Do you know my favorite thing to come out in the last few years? That's comedic bug salad. I've never heard of it. I don't know what that is. But I will look into it. Bug salad. Okay, so it's on Nickelodeon. Tom Kenny. <laughs> I'll just have to check that out. Oh, not sure if you've seen it. All episodes are on YouTube. All right, yeah, I'll for sure check that out then. Comedy wise, it's the only thing. Is Smiling Friends. I've heard of that. I've seen like very short clips, but haven't checked it out. But outside of that, Primal was some of the best TV animation I've ever seen. Yeah, I really wanted to see that. Um, that was on HBO, right? Or or was it? I don't know. But uh, yeah, I wasn't able to see that. I think it's on DVD now. I should look at that. Or Blu-ray. Yeah, that looked great. And his, his design sense is so good. And it was really... Definitely looked super refreshing. Very different than what's out there. Let's see. Huh. 
Uh, I think it's dipping too much there. I don't like that. I think mainly the only thing that I knew about the it's called Smiling Friends was because Mike Stoklasa did a voice on there from Red Leather Media. And that's, uh, my wife and I watch a lot of Red Leather Media. Oh, sorry. I didn't click on that one before, but yeah. Oh, another show, an animation show that I liked that I didn't see the first time around, but uh, was Adventure Time. There's a lot of really funny, funny stuff in that. And the only reason I saw it was because that was one of the things my daughter wanted to watch all the time. So we like just had it on repeat for quite a while and it went through the whole season a couple of times. So I would catch a lot of the episodes. I thought that was a really fun show, and it was really fun the way it kind of grew, you know, became more and more uh, involved with the storylines. Because I remember when it uh, was first, I had seen it in uh, when that short was, re was re released, you know, many, many years ago. And then I remember when it was announced that they were going to make a TV series about it. And then I would see people in the comments saying, you know, that's a poor choice for a show because it was, you know, the short was so like, you know, irreverent and, you know, random. And it was like, they, it was like saying like, you know, how could you make a show out of that? You know, it just seemed like there's no, it was just going to be wacky, nonsensical humor throughout the whole entire series. Um, but uh, definitely worked out because they, you know, they obviously changed throughout. They became different while still having some aspects remain the same. But I think overall, really fun show. And you get the idea, and you get the feeling that I'm pretty sure like the the, the borders had a lot of storyboarders had a lot of input in the the writing of the episode, you know, and that kind of shows it feels. Very uh, driven in a way that other shows might not. I don't want that arm there. Yeah. So this bowl. Over.
And surprisingly, I really liked uh, Cars 3, the Pixar movie. I didn't like Cars 2. And surprisingly, I like Cars. I had never seen it until I you know, was watching it with my daughter. Um, it just didn't look like something that would interest me at all. I was like, I remember seeing when it was, you know, being promoted. And uh, I was just like immediately bummed out that the cars weren't like super cartoony. Because like, obviously my, my mind went to the Tex Avery shorts. His uh, one cab family. And like anytime they would do a cartoon version of a car, you know, it'd just be super expressive and the, the wheel wells would be bending um but uh yeah let's see i haven't seen the third i might have to chuck it in one night yeah i mean i think it's pretty pretty good i mean it looks really good like the, the actual visuals like i really like a lot of the, the atmosphere in the movie there's some really pretty scenes but uh i don't know i really didn't like the second one a lot i did i didn't I didn't like it. I think if they wanted to do an action movie like that, they really they really needed cartoonier cars that could do more more action without it looking too stilted. Um, yeah, there was some good stuff on the third one. I'm really surprised they're making a, another Toy Story movie. It should have ended with the third one. The fourth one was unnecessary, and I don't even know what they're going to do with the uh, with the fourth one. I mean, fifth one. Especially because the, their voices were already sounding old in the fourth one, which is very unsettling because they're supposed to be toys that are, you know... <laughs> always the same as if they were manufactured, you know? So it's just a little awkward having Jesse sound like she's, uh, you know, in on her years. See, I'm a hardcore Toy Story fan, and yeah, five seems even crazy to attempt. Yeah. Do you like the fourth one? I don't, I'm not a fan of that one. I actually wasn't even that much on board with the third one until I saw it a couple of times and I came around to liking it uh, more. Um, and again, that one was one that I, had, that I didn't see until uh, I was watching it with my daughter. I had only seen the first two and I r really liked those movies. But, um, let's see. Forest Wild as it has almost no buzz screen time. Yeah, I mean, I feel like they don't... It felt like they didn't really know what to do with the character because, like, um, you know, they needed him to have his... For some reason, his, like, uh, out-of-body awkward kind of gimmick, you know? Because, like, in the first one, it's he thinks he's a toy. In the second one, he gets, you know, the the... A delusional buzz replaces him for a little while and then the the second one that was the second one and the third one is he gets switched back you know again to original buzz so it's like i guess i didn't want to do that again the fourth one not that they would really need to you know they could have just had him and buzz him and you know buzz and woody having an adventure but i don't know they just didn't know what to do with the cast i guess i don't know i think it looks really pretty there's lots of really good Good looking stuff in it but story wise and character wise this didn't really do much for me all right all right i think i'm gonna take a break from this one i think i'm actually going to end that here i got a good amount of stuff done 
need to figure out what I'm going to do for these expressions because now I'm realizing they should be building and getting more extreme, at least with Felton's down here. So I'll need to figure that out. But anyways, I think I'm going to call it a night for tonight. But uh, thanks so much for, for coming by, Tobias. I really appreciate it. It's fun having the conversation. It's really nice having, uh, you know, stuff to bounce off but um well i'll see this last one let's see yeah five also has tam hanks and tim allen coming back so who the fuck knows what it'll be about yeah i <laughs> yeah, i mean obviously like, i think if they really wanted to like do something for the fans i guess i, I really feel like it things should go back to andy you know like they should Toys should get back together and, and with Andy's kids. I think that's what everyone would want. I think that would probably make for a. If they need to do one more, I mean, you might as well, you know, tie it off with a bow the way I'm sure more, most people would want. Um, and that would make the most sense. Because obviously they, they all have to be together again. Like you can't have them separate still. But who knows? I guess we'll see. But, um,. Yeah, if anybody wants to uh, get my books, I have, let's see, all three of these, check their picture, uh, on Amazon, uh, they're all 32 pages each, I've got some good cartoony stuff in them but uh okay anyways thanks for coming by have a good night bye